Hi my friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Dee, aka The Messy Perfectionist. And here on my channel, I like to share inspirational tips, personal growth tips, my health journey, and helping others achieve a balanced lifestyle so that they can be living their best lives as well. If any of that sounds good to you and you do feel like you benefit from the information that I am providing, please consider hitting that little like button, the subscribe, and hit the little notification bell and you can be alerted every time I upload new content. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the wonderful art of journaling, how it has impacted my life, my journey through the process of it, and how it can help you. If that sounds like something you'd like to learn a little bit more about, please stay tuned. So I've been writing for as long as I can remember. I remember being a little girl and just writing short stories and sharing them with friends and family. I have always been a horror buff and I remember writing one page stories like the mummy, the werewolf, the vampire, and having little illustrations and then sharing them with people. Actually recently my stepmom returned to me a very cute story um, about a little girl and unicorn that I wrote when I was yeah probably eight or nine years old and it was so much like this book series that I love for my daughter um, called Uni the Unicorn you know and I had no memory of it I had no memory of this story at all but I just love this children's story and my daughter has all the books and my story that I wrote when I was like eight or nine years old was so much like it. It was just this kind of heart opening experience and um, joyful and uh, <laughs> kind of a weird coincidence. But so I, I love to write. I have owned many journals and diaries throughout the years, but my very, very first diary was given to me by my dad on Valentine's Day when I was around eight years old, I say. And I loved this diary so much, I still have it. It's one of the few journals or diaries I have from childhood that I actually still have, mostly because it was such a precious item for me. But it, I wrote in this diary from the time that I was eight years old till roughly 18 years old. I owned many other notebooks and journals in between here and there, and they had different purposes, but I still have this one. Being a child, when I received this diary, you know, it started out with the childhood stuff, like, what did I do today? What do I like? Who is my crush? Who's my friend? What TV show did I watch? It's quite humorous to read, actually. but. Um, uh, if you guys are fans of Bailey Sarian, um, she had an episode that she did where she read from her childhood diary and it was just hilarious because, you know, I think we forget as we get older, like how much our minds change and how our mindset on things um, change and adapt and it's just funny. But this diary started out, you know, writing from child, very childlike things and walked me through my difficult teenage and early adulthood years where I shared many of my struggles and difficult times growing up. I was the teenager who had angsty art and a lot of angsty poetry. Many, many journals of believed that the art of writing things down in my diary and in my journals really helped me survive. Why do I say that? Better out than in right? Okay, it's better to get it out of your mind, the sadness and the pain out of your mind, write it down on paper and then be done with it. Now, if we've grown up in a difficult situation, you can carry a lot of pain and you can put on a certain way to be of survival so that maybe people around you don't think things are quite as bad as they are, um, or at least how you perceive them to be. I always felt better after writing. That was one thing for sure. Maybe I'd have a good cry and I, I would always write. So my journals were like my best friends that I could tell all of my secrets to, 
who wouldn't judge me. Those things that I felt like I couldn't share with anybody. Those deep thoughts, those deep dark thoughts that just needed to come out. I have not read my diary in a long time because the things that I experienced back then happened. I feel like they're there. Maybe I will revisit them someday, but I don't feel the need to revisit those things right now. The beautiful thing that happened as I got older, I my journaling began to evolve. From going from that place of that mind dump, that mind vomit that needed to come out, and as I got my stuff together in my life and in my head and started, um, you know, living that, learning to live healthier and happier body, mind, spirit, my journaling morphed. Now, I didn't learn this on my own. I had support. I had someone who I talked to on a professional level, a counselor. She's my herbalist, um, nutritionist. She helped change my life in many different ways. And she was the one who really started facilitating that shift in journaling because what had happened, there was a big gap. My writing always was the source of all the negativity in me that came out, the worst parts of it. Later in life, I would have a very rough breakup with someone who I was in a long-term relationship with and I had known since childhood. We were best friends and entered a relationship and neither one of us were in the right space. And after about seven or eight years, that relationship ended. And at the time, it felt like such a shock to me. And I was so deeply betrayed and hurt and I, I have I had filled this journal on every day just everything about that was happening and I was falling into a deeper and deeper pit and when I felt like I hit that rock bottom and couldn't get out of bed the next day and I didn't want to take a shower and I didn't know what the purpose of living was anymore not to be dramatic but you know, I'm either going to climb up out of this hole or I choose to stay in it. And I don't want to stay in it. I want to be happy. I want to feel good about my life. I don't know how to do this on my own. And so thank God I found someone who helped me find that within myself, you know, at around, I don't know, 28 years old was when things were trying to starting to shift for me. And my life changed dramatically. And writing became a whole nother thing for me. It became not just a mind dump, but it became this thing of what am I grateful for? What is good in my life? What are some of the things that happened today that I appreciate? What is the positive lessons that I learned out of this negative experience, this perceived negative experience? And what is something from the past that I experienced and felt very negative about? And how do I look at those things now? Shifting our mindset is the pathway to living joyfully and happily. And writing and journaling was a big part of that kind of road for me. So as I matured, so too did my journaling. And I would have different journals for things. I would have like my gratitude journal, and my mind dump journal, or I have a good friend that calls it her ugly journal. And they became beautiful places to revisit. Also, extremely difficult to begin. When you're in a dark place, it's really hard to be grateful for things, the little things, isn't it? And it's really hard when you don't feel great about yourself to find those things that you like about yourself. But shifting that perception of self and of the world around you and of your experiences can really change everything in your life. I promise. Changing this mindset and learning how to use my writing and my journaling in a different way rather than just being the mind dump to becoming something that I express my gratitude and also the things that I like about myself and my own life really help to rewire my brain into that place from um, negativity to joy. And around the time that I started doing that, you know, 
all these other things started coming up. I swear, I, I, I remember at one point driving down the road and the colors looking brighter and tears coming to my eyes because I, for the first time in my life, was starting to experience true joy. And it wasn't because of a boyfriend or it wasn't because of what I did that day. It was coming from inside of me. And that is what is true happiness and lasting happiness. Take care of yourself. You have to take care of yourself because no one else is going to. You have to learn to save yourself. When I first started life coaching, my thing on my old website was um, live your truth, helping you help yourself. And I really felt that passionately. I wanted to be able to teach people how to help themselves. I wasn't into this whole thing of, you know, dragging sessions out and charging hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And I really wanted to be able to teach people how to use these exercises for themselves and have them understand that I'm not gonna save them and no one else is going to. Like it's, you, you, I can be a sounding board, I can help you learn experiences, a counselor can do the same and on a very even deeper level, but in the end, you have to be the one that does the work, right? You have to be the one that does the work. I was, you know, really focused, I started focusing on my health, I was doing yoga every day. Um, I lived with, I was living with my best friend, AKA my sister <laughs> at the time, and we were juicing a lot, and we were both um, kind of growing through this healthful transition at the same time. So that was a really fun, wonderful experience too, because I didn't just have to do this completely by myself. Um, you know, I had my bestie also working on herself. So we were both growing and both being positive and both improving our lives. And um, if that's one thing I can suggest to you is surround yourself with the people that you look up to people that are doing well, who are your mentors, you know, surround yourself with those good people. Don't be in the cesspool and expect things to be different. I don't know how else to say it. Don't be with people who put you down, who treat you like garbage, who treat other people like garbage, who are malicious gossips, you know, people who are doing things that you know are not good for your lifestyle and you get a little sucked into or they're drama constantly. If you, if you do that, that's going to be part of your experience as well. If you don't want that to be part of your experience, you know, be with people that are better than you <laughs> or at least on the same path and wanting to improve things and not be in that dark, dark place. So much is about timing in life. I think about my husband and I's relationship and um, we're very different people and we always joke. And if we had met at any time prior, it, we would never have been together. We would have never met and decided to start dating or become a couple because he was a completely different person and I was a completely different person and together we would not have meshed. We would not have meshed well at all. Now we're still very different people but we have a very common foundation and that's what's important. So now I tend to practice very mindful journaling and this is probably coming up because as we're entering near Thanksgiving and November, I use that time of year to express gratitude and of sharing, of sharing with friends and family and being uh, there. And I always, um, for many years, I have tended to, I like to invite people over for Thanksgiving who maybe don't have a place to go or, um, you know, that I know or, you know, they don't have family to get together with. And the reason that is, is because I had many years um, as a young adult where I didn't have anywhere to go for the holidays. I was doing nursing. I did not have children. And so at that time that meant I worked like every holiday. 
And I was very grateful to some of the friends that I had at that time that opened their homes up to me and invited me for Thanksgiving and invited me for Christmas. And I never forgot that how how good that felt to my heart. So always, you know, try to share your experiences, be grateful. Always try to share of yourself in some way, even if it's a small way, because what you give out comes back to thee. It really, really does. And what you perceive of your reality is just that. Shift the perception, shift your reality, and put action behind it. I'm not talking about wishful thinking. I'm not talking about something that's like, you know, oh, I just wish I had a million dollars, okay? Why do you want that million dollars? Why do you want that million dollars? And if you decide why you want that million dollars, if that's something you still want, what are the reasons and how are you gonna get there? How are you gonna make a million dollars? What are your action steps? And journaling can be a big part of that to kind of um, help your thoughts become collected and become a vision for you to then act on because vision without action is nothing. If you wanna start manifesting a healthier way to be, and um, whether that's emotionally, or you want to start creating some more of abundance in some other area of your life, you can do that with journaling. And I like to start with a few different, like I said, I have a gratitude journal, I have you know, my many blessings journal, and then I have just, you know, I also have daily journals um, to write my experiences and start with gratitude. Gratitude is the key to everything. If you have gratitude in your heart, you cannot be in a place of lack. Why is that? Because they're two polar opposites. If you are in the mindset of gratitude and feeling thankful for what you have, you're not in a place of lack, right? Write down 10 things you're grateful for every single day. Do that for a month. If you have self body image issues and you feel like you lack in some way, you look in the mirror and you're your worst critic, write down 10 things every day that you love about yourself. This one was tough for me when I was 30, 28, 30, right? This one was tough for me. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> There's like, I don't like anything about myself. Well, if I don't like anything about myself, how is anybody else gonna like anything about myself? I like my eyes. I am a good person. I try to listen well. I want to share my experiences to help others. I'm a good mother. I try to be a good wife. You know, those are, those are some things. So just start like that, you know, um, I'm good at my job. I really like my job. And if you hate your job, start looking for another one because there are other, there are other opportunities out there and get focused on what you want first to have that clear in your mind and then you can start building those action steps forward. So that's kind of my input on journaling, how it has impacted my life, and a few tips on what you can do to get started to start manifesting more of that which you want in your life and to purge that which you want less of in your life. I wish you all well, um, many blessings. I hope everyone is doing well out there and I will be talking to you later. Have a great night. Bye-bye.